Welcome to the What's New video for version 12.5, where we're going to give you an overview of all of the new and improved features that we've added in this release. This video is intended for existing customers who've recently upgraded to the latest version and only includes details of the incremental changes and enhancements to the previous version of the software that you should already be familiar with, along with minor changes. So let's get started. For this release, we've extended some of the text creation and edit tools to the 3D view, where you're now able to create, transform and move text all within the 3D view. You can now make use of all the node editing functionality that you're already used to in the 2D view right from within the 3D view where you're now able to manipulate nodes and spans and make use of the mirror functionality without having to switch between views. When using the polyline tool, you are now able to cycle through different modes using the up, down arrow keys, allowing you to precisely position your next node by length, length and angle, absolute XY and relative XY. This will ultimately help draw precise parts all directly in the 3D view without having to use any of the options in the form for ease of use. Lines can now be edited to be a specific length from within the 3D view in transform and node edit mode. Simply hover over a line span and the software will display the current length in the edit field. To alter this, simply click the edit box and type in the value required where the software will automatically update that line length, helping you speed up precise adjustments in your vector drawings. It is now possible to enter node edit mode while in any of the vector shape creation tools. Simply press N to enter node edit mode and when you're done editing, you can press escape to exit out of the node edit mode where you can continue to use the shape creation tool, making it easier to alternate between shape creation and node editing. You can now use the fillet tool directly in the 3D view, eliminating the need to switch between views. When you move the cursor over a node that can be filleted, a preview will appear showing how the fillet will look. You can adjust the size of the fillet directly from the field in the 3D view by entering a precise value. Alternatively, you can dynamically adjust the size of the fillet by holding the mouse whilst moving. To reduce the efforts of working from the form, you can also use the up down cursor keys to switch between the various fillet types to save on the mouse miles. Fillets can be removed in the same way as the 2D view by moving the cursor over an existing fillet where the fillet removal cursor will appear and clicking this will remove the fillet. The trim tool functionality has now been added to the 3D view. When using the trim tool in the 3D view, it will create a handy preview of the area to be cut in a different color, allowing you to visualize what the effect will be. Where you're not able to trim a vector, for instance, with a vector group, the cursor will display a strike and the group will be highlighted to make this clear. The Extend Vectors tool is now fully integrated into the 3D view, making your workflow smoother and more intuitive. It is now possible to edit all the different types of dimensions dynamically. Simply drag their control points around to change the various properties. This enhancement includes anchor points, offsets, caption size, caption text and caption position. Additionally, when you select a dimension and its corresponding part to resize, the values automatically adjust to reflect the new size. This ensures that your dimensions stay accurate as your design evolves. We've made improvements to the way that we nest parts. There is now a new checkbox on the nesting form called Overwrite Active Sheet. If this option is selected, then anything on the active sheet will be removed and parts will be nested directly from the current sheet and the software will eliminate blank sheets entirely. 
It is now possible to select vectors by part, even if those vectors are not grouped. The new part selection option can be accessed from the right click context menu. And with a single vector selected, using this option will select the rest of the part the selected vector is part of. And this uses the same logic as nesting to determine what makes up a part, so it will find the outermost vector that contains or intersects with the selection and includes anything within that outermost vector and anything that intersects with it or anything that's contained within it, making it much easier to select part items within your job. When using the plate production feature, there is now an additional option to allow sheets to be used instead of layers. When the sheets option is selected, all of the vectors will retain their original layer associations and the resulting plates will be placed onto new sheets. Any toolpaths created for the plates will also be created on those sheets, making the creation of plates easier to manage. You can now quickly access the baking functionality from the right click context menu in the components tab or the components drop down menu. This streamlined workflow allows for faster and more efficient component baking. We've made improvements to the sketch carve toolpath. We are now able to visualize the effect of the sketch carving all from within the 3D view eliminating the need to switch perspectives, helping to streamline your workflow. We've added a new surface color option to the toolpath preview form. The surface color option allows you to select a color which will simulate a colored, painted or laminated surface on top of your material. And when cut through, the software will simulate both the surface colour and the material appearance, helping to achieve a more realistic preview when working with coloured surface materials. We've added a new option in the toolpath settings, allowing you to append the name of the tool being used for clearance tools in a multi-tool toolpath helping you to easily identify the tools needed for the job right from within your toolpath tree. Uncalculated toolpaths are now highlighted more prominently, featuring a bold red warning exclamation mark and italicised text, making them instantly recognisable in your toolpath list. This enhancement ensures easy identification of toolpaths that require calculation. Toolpath groups are now sheet specific, where a toolpath group can only correspond to a single sheet, helping you keep your project more organised where you only have visibility of tool groups applicable to the sheet that you are viewing. Toolpaths can now be copied or moved to a different sheet or side. When toolpaths are copied or moved this way, they'll appear as uncalculated on the sheet or side that they've been copied or moved to. This enhancement will ensure for a quicker workflow and provide you with more flexibility when managing complex projects. The pockets in toolpaths have been optimised so that unnecessary retractions to the safe Z between passes are removed. Now this allows for smoother, faster pocketing operations with reduced tool retracts, helping to minimise machine wear and cutting time. Peck drilling can now be visualised during simulation. There is now the option to draw marks representing the drill diameter. If peck drilling is enabled, one of these will be drawn for each peck, ensuring for a more accurate toolpath representation. We've now added the ability to set the acceleration values for your machine in the machine configuration form. Now this means that you're now able to select a new machine acceleration option on the toolpath summary form and that will attempt to give you a better estimate of the machine in time based off these values. The laser sketch engraving toolpath is a brand new toolpath that we've added to the laser module.
Based on the same principle as the SketchCraft toolpath, this feature converts high quality image or a 3D model into a laser toolpath, producing impressive stylistic results with very little design input. We've made it easier to position imported rotary models using the new orientation gizmo. This allows you to dynamically position the model as well as having the ability to input precise rotation values in the edit fields, helping to simplify the process of importing and positioning models ready for rotary machining. Guidelines can now be viewed, placed and manipulated within the 3D view. To place guides when working within the 3D view, you can simply use the right-click context menu and from the guidelines section, select to insert either a horizontal, vertical or angled guide. The guides can be moved within the 3D view by just clicking and dragging them with the mouse. Clicking on a guide will also select it and allow you to set the position or angle precisely by using the edit fields. The angle of a guide can be changed by clicking on the angle handle and dragging to a new angle. Guides can be easily removed by clicking on it to select it and then pressing the delete key. To control the visibility of guides in the 3D view, simply press the toggle button to turn them on or off as needed. And on top of that, you're able to set the colour and thickness of the guides in the 3D view for that added customization. The grid can now be visible from within the 3D view. We also have the additional ability to set the colour and thickness of the grid, which can be assigned in the 3D view settings section of the options page. The sheets, layers and levels drop down menus can now be resized either manually or dynamically. This can be controlled using the Save drop-down layout option in the Window Layout section of the Options form. The Dynamic option will automatically resize itself when opened to fit all of your items and adjusting for the length of those items. If the option is set to Yes, the drop-down menus will open at the last size that they were set to. And you can adjust the size of the menu and the next time that it's opened, it will remember the size that you had set previously. And the three drop down menus all have independent size settings, so different sizes can be set for each if required. Layers can now be dragged to reposition them in the layers list on the layers tab and also within the layers drop down menu, making it easier and more intuitive to organize your project. We've added a filter button to the top of the layer list tab and the bottom of the layer list drop down. Now when this is off, all the layers will be shown. However, when the filter is toggled on, the only layers shown will be those that contain objects that are on the current sheet or side, ensuring that you have control of what's visible, making it easier to see the data that really matters. A duplicate option has been added to the right-click menu for layers on both the Layers tab and the Layers drop-down menu. When selected, a duplicate will be made of the layer and all of the objects on it, making it easy for you to experiment with changes or whilst preserving the original layer. A duplicate option has been added to the right-click menu for Sheets on both the Sheets tab and the Sheets drop-down menu. When selected, the sheet and all of its contents will be duplicated. This includes vectors, toolpaths and components in the component tree, inclusive of any level effects that you may have. We now support the import of the increasingly popular .webp image file format, which is known for its smaller file sizes, all whilst preserving high quality. In this release, bitmaps are now faded in such a way that preserves the original colours, giving you a better visual reference while working on your design. 
So that completes this overview of the enhancements that we've made in this release. To learn more about the features covered in this video, head over to vetrit.com or you can download the free trial software and read the supporting documentation. Thank you for watching.